Um, the next question is Jeff Younger. Jeff, your case went to the Supreme Court of Texas, which, in my opinion, shockingly, and I say shockingly, upheld uh, Judge Mary Brown's decision to allow your ex-wife, who claimed that she was never married to you, the ability to take your children to California, where Governor Newsom said California would be a, a refuge state, a refugee state for trans people, especially for people from Texas. Justice John Devine was the only dissent. I will tell you my prejudice. I love John Devine, and uh, thank you for standing up for what I think was right. I'm not on the, the court, of course, but um, are there any interstate implications in what the courts did to you? Okay, let me pick up where you ended. Uh, yeah. Uh, Justice Devine is the only justice, uh, might be the only judge, in the state of Texas that has stood up for pro the rights of pro se litigants. He's the only one that has consistently voted for justice over procedure. He's the only one that did what the family code said he was supposed to do, which is to rule in the best interest of the children. Justice Devine is the only one facing a primary challenger. Do you think that's an accident? No. It is not an accident. Um, we have a, a monopoly in the judicial system, um, and it's not just in Texas. Uh, it was very clear in my case uh, that even parts of the transgender kidnapping laws that were passed in California, you may not be aware of these, California basically declared in a law that passed both houses and was signed by the governor that said that, that uh, they would never return a child who was transgender to a state that did not offer what they called gender affirming care by what that they meant chemical castration or physical castration of minors. So if the, Texas, Texas had just passed a law to outlaw all this, so Texas was obviously one of those states. So my ex-wife immediately moved. Uh, prior to any judicial order. When it was later litigated, the judge allowed her to move, and that was the basis of that. Um, the, su the Supreme Court basically said that my children were in no greater risk in California of chemical castration than they would be in Texas, where it's illegal. So it's it transparently absurd. And it was clear that there was actual collusion between Democrat judges in Texas and Democrat judges in California. I had several attorneys that I didn't even know. They contacted me out of the blue. Most two of them through interlocutors and one direct, directly. That portions of the transgender kidnapping bill had been written specifically around my case. It was the exemplar of the kind of child they wanted to keep in California. So there's there's a there's a much larger problem here. It's not just state law. Uh, judges go to um, Trainings and, and these are trainings um, not just in the states, but also they go out of state and do these trainings and a Consensus emerges about how to deal with these cases and it's not always Respectful of, of the rights of children or parents, but I do want to say once again I you know I castigated the electorate for electing bad judges Don't you let the one good justice in the state of Texas? Lose his job. Don't you let that happen? And if it does happen, you you know I will I will tell you about it. I'll, I'll be on your case about it. So think about carefully about who you vote for judges and prosecutors. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. And you know I read the opinion that was written, authored by one of the other Supreme Court justices. When I read it, I saw that they had air regarding the basic facts. Yes, they did. They said that you that you that it was a divorce situation. It was not a divorce situation. It was annulment, a forced annulment, and uh, this was just tragic what took place. And people would tell me, I thought Texas was supposed to be a red conservative state. <laughs> what a shame.